Today I'm going to show you how to replace the radiator in this 2006 Hummer H3. If you have this bottom cover, I find it's easier to take it off to assist in draining the coolant. It doesn't get everywhere. 13 millimeter socket. These back two you just have to loosen. Position the catch container onto the passenger side. We have to start by removing the top radiator hose before we drain to get rid of this fan shroud. A little bit of coolant might come out. Slide that back. Get it off. Just a little. Tuck this back behind something. Now this fan shroud is removable without removing the fan clutch. There's these little slider tabs that you release on each this side. On the passenger side, just pull this slider tab out and then slide it up. Rotate this plastic thing like that. And there's little retaining tabs on each side of the radiator. Just bend those tabs towards the rear of the vehicle. Lift them up. Do the same thing on the other side. Lift up. Sometimes it's tricky to get both of them. There we go. Turn it back. And then just kind of work the fan shroud out of there. So yeah, that slider mechanism works. It just rotates like that to open a hole in the bottom so the fan can slide through. These radiators don't have drain valves, so the only way to drain them is to remove the lower radiator hose. So position a catch container under the hose. Loosen the hose clamp. Now you can pull the lower radiator hose slowly, so all that coolant's gonna rush out. Sometimes a pry tool is helpful to get the hose off. You could do this from the bottom. I just prefer not to get an antifreeze shower. Let that drain. Discard the old radiator cap. There's no sense in reusing them. Failed radiator caps cause a lot of radiator failures themselves. So get rid of that. Disconnect the overflow tank hose. So inside, take a 13 millimeter and remove this upper radiator mount. This is the new radiator. I just want to give you a demonstration of how the transmission cooler line clips attach. They're held in with these little spring clips. There is some special tool that you can use to remove them, but a right angle pick works just fine if you don't have that special tool. I have it somewhere, so I feel like looking for it. And a right angle pick works fine if you don't have that special tool. Just knock it out of its groove and pull it out. And don't lose it. When you're ready to get it back on, you just pop it back in the radiator. Might be a little tricky, but you can get it. Just like that. And unless your new radiator doesn't come with these spring clips, you don't have to worry about putting them back. Because when you insert the transmission cooler line, it just clicks in and holds. 
Now on the radiator, start by sliding the transmission line down out of this little retaining spring clip and then pull back this plastic protective cover. Get rid of that. Get down there. I hope you can see it. Go. Just start with the pick and pick the open ends until you get it lifted out of its groove. And at that point, you can just pull the line out. Same process for the other side. Get rid of the plastic cover. And that spring clip hit the ground, but it doesn't matter. Our radiator has new spring clips. Now I just gently pull the transmission cooler line out of there. Have your catch, catch container ready to catch the trans fluid. It's going to come out. You won't lose much trans fluid. Probably not even enough to worry about topping off. Maybe like an eighth of a quart, if that. Just let that cooler drain and then do the other one. Okay, now the other one. There we go. Trans cooler is disconnected. Now push the radiator forward and you have to detach the AC condenser from the radiator. It's held in with these two 10 millimeter bolts at the top, one on each side. This one's kind of hard to get a ratchet on so you might have to use a box end wrench. bottom of the AC condenser just slides into these tabs at the bottom of the radiator. So just kind of pull it up and out of those tabs and slide it forward as you can. As far forward. And at that point the radiator is free and it's ready to pull out. Just grab hold of it. Work it around all the stuff it's going to catch on. Yummy. I'll just take a minute to compare the old and new radiator and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Every port and every clip and the transmission cooler lines. You can see right off the bat that the new radiator doesn't have these little support tabs for the trans cooler lines. So switch those over. protective caps off of all the ports, including the trans cooler lines. Now shove the AC condenser as far back as it'll go towards the front of the vehicle to make way for the new radiator. Get all these hoses out of the way and things. Now you're ready to lower the new radiator in. Bottom part of the radiator sits with these pegs that go into the body metal here and here. These are supposed to have rubber grommets in them. If you find they're missing, then they're most likely still attached to the old radiator. So pry them off. Just hit these grommets with WD-40 on the outside and the inside. And now just put them in there. Little holes there. Same thing for the other side. Drop it in. Grab the radiator. Carefully lower it in. Make sure those bottom pegs go into the grommets.
you might have to lift the AC con condenser up and sit it in its clips to get the radiator enough room to move back all the way. It's just a matter of shoving and wiggling things, but don't force anything. You're dealing with a very thin aluminum, so you can easily screw yourself by using too much force. Start with the hard one. Just loosely install this one until it's threaded in. Don't tighten it until you get the other one in. Now you can start tightening them. Everything looks good, then you can reinstall this top mount. Now you can reconnect the trans cooler lines. Let's grab them and insert them until they click in. Slide that plastic cover over the clip. Same thing for the other side. Clicks in, plastic cover. I clip it into the retaining tab. Trans cooler is connected. I reconnect the lower radiator hose. And tighten the hose clamp. Now your radiator might have the uh, metal spring type hose clamp. I guess somebody at some point put this one on there. I'm glad they did because these are much easier. Make sure a lower rad hose is tight. It's good. Fan shroud sits with these bottom two pegs that pile it into the peg holes in the radiator. Take the fan shroud, lower it in. Get it around all the things it's going to catch on. Make sure the bottom two pegs went where they're supposed to go. Make sure both those tabs on the sides of the fan shroud and this middle lip all go in the right place. This one's good. Now rotate the fan shroud mechanism thing until it clicks. And perfect. Reconnect the overflow tank hose and reconnect the upper radiator hose. Now this one has one of those annoying spring clip hose clamps. Now start filling the radiator with a 50-50 mix of antifreeze ethylene glycol and distilled water. And once it's full, start the engine and let it heat up burp the rest of the air out of the system. Also make sure your overflow bottle is filled to the cold line. This line right here. It's also a good idea to set the heater on high in case any air got in the heater core.
And then once you've burped the air out of the system, install your new radiator cap. Now go take the vehicle for a drive, get it nice and warmed up, then allow it to completely cool, and then come back and check the radiator level, and make sure it's topped off. Sometimes on these Hummers, it's necessary to raise the front of the vehicle or park it on a steep incline in order to burp all the air out of the system. Sometimes these get air bubbles trapped in the front cooling jacket in the head. Just take your jack and get it under there. The front cross member. the air bubbles out. Take your new radiator cap, put it back on. Before I put the front protector plate back on, I like to just take some brake cleaner and clean things up under here. All the coolant and transmission fluid. Now take the plate. First insert it on top of the lower valence. And then hook it onto the rear bolts. Slide it forward. That. Now start these front bolts. If this video helped you, please consider supporting the channel by hitting the like button and subscribing. Thanks for watching.